Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today we have another very small car to take a look at. I'm of course kidding. Behind me, we have the new Ford F-150 Lightning, the all electric F-Series pickup. Now, Marquez Brownlee drove one of these recently and referred to it as the iPhone of pickup trucks. This is a car that has huge significance for Ford in the new era, in the EV world. This is the top spec model of the new Lightning and it's a big name badge as well. We've got the extended range battery. We've got the platinum level of trim. We're going to go through it in detail to find out today what this is all about. But we're here in the UK and they don't sell these in Europe. I think this is the only one on the whole continent at this moment in time. And today I have the key to take it for a first drive to find out all about the new Ford F-150 Lightning. We'll begin with a walk around because on the face of it, the new Lightning looks and feels like an updated, refreshed F-150, a car that everyone knows, one of the best-selling cars of all time. In fact, only in the second spot behind the Toyota Corolla, the F-Series in general has spawned various different models. The Lightning badge has come back for this, which is quite clever, it has to be said, for the whole electric element of it. But the original Lightning in 1993 was a shorter, sportier version of the pickup. The second generation was in 1999. Now fast forward a few decades, and we have the full electric take on a pickup truck. Now, pickup trucks are utility vehicles. It's about practicality, it's about usability. It's not so much, as Marquez said, about driving dynamics. We will enjoy the drive out, but I want to take a full look at this because there are a few things that really stand out about it. And of course, as we go into this new era, electric EVs are more and more important than ever. And in a pickup, you would typically associate this area with housing an engine. You know, Ford have also just launched the Raptor R with the GT500's engine and 700 odd horsepower. This has 580 horsepower, but over a thousand newton meters of torque, 1,050. And believe me, when we drive it on the road, it's a kick in the back. It does the zero to 60 in only four seconds. But why I'm talking about the engine, or in this case, the lack of an engine, because we've got two motors, is because up front instead, if I double press this button, we actually have a bonnet or a hood, pops and beeps and waits a second, and opens up to reveal a storage space. Now, typically in a pickup, you don't have any enclosed storage other than in your back seats. You've got the flatbed behind. And I remember being at SEMA where this actually launched last year and they kept the car opened up because this is the bit that makes you go, wait a second, that's a storage space. And it's over 400 liters of storage, which is more than you get in the actual boot or trunk of a regular car. That's a big old amount of space. Beneath the shelf at the front, you actually have your charging cables. They can be tucked away in there. And there are so many clever bits of practicality, like even that can be wedged into various angles, depending on what you want. It actually tells you 400 litres of luggage, 400 pounds of cargo capacity that can be stowed away in the front. Although I would like a hinge for that, probably. Things like this, huge amounts of charging ports all around because electric. Four full US ports plus a USB socket or two in there as well. And that's something that you find as you explore all around this. So what they've done with the Lightning is create something that's not unfamiliar. I think that's one of the scariest things or biggest mindset changes with electric cars is that they look so unusual. They look different. They look weird. They look slightly unwelcoming if you don't know what they're all about. This looks like an F-150. You know, you've got the two rows of seats. You've got a massive flatbed at the back. You just happen to have the lightning text here giving you a bit of a hint of what it's about. So we've got two motors. This being the extended range battery means instead of the standard 98 kilowatt hours, we have 131 kilowatt hours. That's a big old battery. And the big thing about that is it means we have a serious range. It claims 320 miles. I believe you can get pretty close to 300 miles in normal driving. And that's actually pretty decent. Now I've been charging it up on my SeaTac Charge Storm Connected 2 charger that I have installed here at the Schmuseum, which makes life super easy. Drove it out for a couple of miles just now and it only went down from 100% to 99%. It is pretty good. So more practicality things, electric tailgate back here. Like all F-150s, and you have to excuse me because I haven't driven all that many. I've been out in a Raptor before, obviously looking forward to driving the Raptor R, but here in the UK and around Europe, we don't really tend to get that many cars of this scale. It's a big old thing for UK roads, but you have things like a ruler, a measure here on the rear deck. You can literally bring out your tools and use the flatbed rear part tailgate to work things out. You can press here 
pop out this, which actually, he says, you'll step up towards the back of the car. You've also got that as well. Make life easy. And that's the thing with this, right? It's all about practicality, about making it super, super easy to just use and to live with and to go about whatever it might be that you're doing. Pack this back away, hopefully smoothly and easily. We've also, again, more sockets back here, more charging sockets for all sorts of different things. More main sockets, regular US plugs. And then down underneath, just to press the button, that can fold back up. You can do it from the key as well. Obviously, we've got huge towing capacity. The launch of the Lightning was teased by towing a train. They actually towed a train along the tracks with this thing, but no problems for pulling three and a half tons, four and a half tons, whatever it is. You can actually get an upgraded towing pack as well. Payload, you can get, I think, about a thousand kilos in this. So it's a workhorse. It's a car to use and to be able to throw stuff in. It just happens to embrace the new world of electric technology. When it comes to the inside, and we'll have a better look at this in more detail a little bit later on, We've got the big digital displays. We've got a whole lot of comfort features, storage areas, storage cubbies, luxury seats, just about everything that you could really want to have in one of these kind of cars. So I think we should go out for a drive on the road and find out what it's actually like to experience a drive in this, the F-150 Lightning. Well, here we are and it is fascinating that topic of whether this is the iphone of pickup trucks we're going to have to come back to that one but driving along it's very familiar in the sense of being a massive car you're sat very high up you've got great visibility it's too big for some of the countryside lanes that we have here normally i'd go off into the windy rural areas but i think in this i'm going to stick to some main roads for once we've got all of the technology that you could possibly want blue cruise with the adaptive cruise control the lane keeping assist in fact even if you look away from your center directly ahead viewpoint for a while, it actually beeps at you and chimes and tells you to look where you should be looking. Same with the steering wheel, same with everything that you could possibly want. We've got a screen in here that reminds me of the one found in the Mustang Mach-E. And talking about the Mach-E, obviously the Lightning, the Mach-E, all of these cars which are reinventing older Ford models, bringing back famous nameplates in this electric generation, in this new era, something that has to be embraced for legislation reasons, for the environment and for everything else. And we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that later on. But the thing probably that's taken me the most by surprise is how fast this thing is, how quickly it accelerates. So this car with the larger battery pack and the dual motor setup is 580 horsepower and 1,050 Newton meters. Like I said, four seconds to 60 miles per hour, just shy of hundred kilometers per hour, but it's a big old thing. So when you take this, which is 3,060, 64 kilos, 6,750 pounds, and you put your foot down, it's a moment of, whoa, did that really happen? There's a bit of torque steer going on, I won't lie, but it's definitely, definitely a big surprise, and it can go up to 120 miles per hour, so about 195 kilometers per hour or so. If I just play with some of the settings here as we come out of this roundabout, let's pop it into sport. And there are a few things you can change. You can have one pedal driving, although I tend to try and avoid one pedal driving, not the biggest fan. We've got the propulsion sound turned on and the sound is quite unusual. So uphill, foot down. This isn't supposed to happen. Something over three tons shouldn't accelerate that hard. So you can hear the noise in the background and unlike trying to be some UFO-esque electrical were. It actually just sounds a bit like a combustion engine. So the sound that they're generating and playing back to you makes you feel like you're in a regular F-150 pickup. And over the many decades that the F-Series has existed, they've sold tens of millions of them. It's something like 30 or 40 million cars that have been sold. The Corolla, as I said earlier, the only car of which there have been more, with about 50 million in total. You can change all the displays and settings and you know we've got our other things here so you can pop it back into normal and the regeneration changes as well so in normal it actually cruises and carries the speed a little bit more in sport you feel it just trying to recoup a little bit of power back into the battery under braking and you get some graphics and charts in front of you showing exactly what it's doing and what it's up to as well but it's calm it's quiet in fact it's so quiet that you're acutely aware of the wind noise off the door mirrors. Now we are stuck behind a van at the moment. It would be lovely to get an opportunity 
just to pull out ahead. Sadly, that's not about to rise. But like I say, there's not a lot of sound in here outside of the propulsion sound and a bit of wind noise that you hear, a bit of buffeting that you hear from everything that's happening around the door mirror side. They are quite small, actually, considering the scale, but it's a big, big old thing. It's a big old truck. It's a big old beastie. And you're very, very conscious of that on the roads that we have here. Extremely conscious of that. I'm, I'm not going to lie about it at all. Now, you have plenty of things around you, and it's amazing just to start pressing buttons and playing and opening cubby holes because the amount of storage and practicality is almost unheard of. You've got the grab handles up front if you need to cling on when you're off-roading for some reason, depending where you're going and what you're doing. But we're going to be keeping to the tarmac today. So what is this? This is a car that you're not going to feel is alien. It's a car that feels like you expect a pickup to feel. If you've had generations of F-150s of different derivatives, you're not going to be intimidated by that whole, ele whole electric car world. And the fact that it can do over 300 miles in a single full charge is actually quite astonishing. A 130 kilowatt hour battery is obviously quite a heavy thing, but I'm not sure there are many other production road cars with a battery as large as that that exist out on the market at all. I think this is about as big as they're going to get, um, certainly at this stage, obviously, as battery technology improves and they can be compacted a little bit more, as we've seen in the likes of the Mercedes EQXX, for example, things are going to change down the line. But I'm blown away by the ease of it, and I partly expected in advance to feel that way. The torque is just instant. And you have to actually be a little bit delicate not to go too aggressively back on the throttle. And it feels uncomfortable, obviously, as a result, as we're familiar with electric cars. But with the arrival of the GM electric Hummer, the Rivians, including the pickup, the other models coming from Toyota, from Ram, from everyone else in this space, it's going to be hotly contested. And I believe Ford actually have hundreds of thousands of orders for these already, a couple of hundred thousand orders for good reason. I mean, it was about three years ago now, just shy of three years ago, that Tesla took the wraps off the Cybertruck, which is yet to make it to fruition. This was launched, well, less than a year ago, and here we are, driving one in Europe of all places. On the dashboard in front of me, I get all sorts of pop-ups and notifications about how much uh, recuperation I've made or what I've been braking, how much brake energy has been recovered and reused which is all quite fun. I like displays, I like dials. There are some games and things you can play on with this as well. And then you get to the functionality like the towing side of it, the smart hitch, the onboard scales, it can weigh the payload for you. It has scales built in. Now, I'm sure that's something that you get on other pickups, but it's not something I've ever seen on another pickup. So I've found that quite fun to just explore and play a little bit with. We have all the cameras and 360 views and everything you might like from that, all of the control from the key. Obviously, you can't start this one from the key, but then there wouldn't be a whole lot of benefit in doing so, given electric cars, effectively, you just hop in, start driving, and they don't need time to warm up. I mean, yes, a little bit of brakes and tires, but not in the way that a combustion engine needs to get fluids rolling or flowing through it. What else do we have? All the lighting, all the power supplies, and you can actually reverse power. You can use the car as a massive portable battery pack to charge up your house your mobile devices, absolutely no problem. And there's a whole lot of power. You could charge your phone out of this a lot of times, hundreds and maybe thousands of times. Anyway, more than you'd ever realistically need to. I'm just very aware, as I said, of how big it is. It is bus size wide here, coach size wide. And that is something that makes it a little bit over the top. Obviously here we have the Rangers, the smaller, pick up from the Ford range, but they're very heavily going into the EV world. You know, the Mustang Mach-E, this, next up the E-Transit, the electric versions of all sorts of different cars. I feel like Ford were very late to the electric game, but they're now doing it full on, completely across the board in every possible way, maximizing the electric game, preparing for the next generation. Obviously, Ford brought the car to the masses with the Model T a century or so ago. They brought the pickups to the masses with the F-150s, with the F-Series cars. And now they're trying to do that again in the electric world. And yes, some of these discussions with regards to the names are quite controversial. For example, the Mustang 
being on an SUV, and in this case, the Lightning being on an electric car as well. But I get it. It's in a big way, it's marketing, and it has to be done because obviously governments set the rules, and the manufacturers have to follow those rules. That's how it is. We vote for the governments; they choose what they want, and we go around in a circle from there. And while EV might not necessarily be 100% our definite future because there are synthetic fuels, there's hydrogen, there are all sorts of other things in the works as well. It's a big part of the future, so it has to be embraced and it has to be done, certainly for the time being. It's giving me all sorts of line warnings that I'm straying over and it's quite hard not to on roads like this, to be completely honest. But I do like those graphics and I do like just knowing that the safety systems are there if you miss something for some reason. So this is like I say, something that you're not going to look at and think, you know, ooh, oh, that looks a bit weird. Because it doesn't. It, it blends in. It looks like an F-150. And if you're in the US, and I obviously spend a lot of time in the US, you see Ford pickups, you see pickup trucks in general just everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. There are F-150s every single time you blink, you will see one somewhere. So it was a natural direction to go. It's such an unusual, I guess, idea only a few years ago, but it makes so much sense now, and it does it in such a brilliant way. The other end of the spectrum is, as we'll discover in a moment when we get onto some national speed limit roads and can accelerate a little bit more, that it's so much more sporty than I believe this kind of thing could be. It's very, very gentle. The suspension is great. They've got a new suspension set up for this, which honestly is super smooth, even when you're going over various bumps and things. And I've just been driving in our team car, which is a Cupra Formentor, a little SUV, a very decently powered SUV, a sporty SUV. And the way this rides over any bump is so much smoother, which you don't expect for something of this size. Then the road opens, and oh my word, it is away. Yes, okay, I'm not gonna try and pretend it is the best thing dynamically because it's still a massively heavy, oversized machine. But it's not bad, it's not bad. And that's the thing with it, it does everything quite well. Everything that you don't think it should be able to do quite well, it does quite well, except for fitting into parking spaces here fairly obviously because they are not made to be this long or this wide so you're going to be on the white lines on both sides but hey where you have the space pretty much anywhere in the US you do not have that problem and when you have 300 or so miles of range you're also not living in fear of running out yes it has fast charging it has all sorts of different cables that are up front in the car we've been charging it off my UK charger even though it's got a US different type plug there are obviously different lots of different plugs and things they are kind of consolidating into one but it comes with the various different cables that you could possibly need um, even though we're in a completely different zone to where this particular model was built to go but it just handles it all and that's probably what's impressing me the most about driving in the lightning is is that like I say it, it does everything that you want it to do in a really quite good way and I've actually got nothing behind me at all so when we come to the national speed limit sign here. I'm just going to slow down for a moment, come basically to a stop because we're on an empty road, come completely to a stop. Right, let's go. Oh my gosh. You feel the weight getting moving in that 60 miles an hour. I mean, what? How? Why? Obviously, this is more power than the standard model, but this is plenty absolutely plenty and you can do that with a ton of weight being transported around just throw everything in with all of the experience and knowledge and know-how that they've built up from decades and decades of making these cars perfecting the perfecting the formula which i think brings us on to the question is this the iphone of pickup trucks it is certainly a very very well made product it's not the first to do what it does it's not the first pickup truck it's not the first electric car it's not even actually the first electric suv but it's brought it together in a package which is brilliantly complete offers so much and does it all very very well and i have to say i think ford are marketing it quite well i think ford are marketing this new generation of cars even if you don't necessarily agree with the names in a way that for the masses works and for the masses is obviously very important because if they're to survive and if they're to keep making cars that I love and I know many of you love as well this is the way things have to go at the moment and they're doing a really really good job of it back on the main roads again though back on the power 
you do get a bit of torque steer, but obviously no gearbox, single gear effectively all the way through, straight back to highway motorway speeds and on the way you go. So we're heading back towards base because I want to show you so much more of the interior of this. There are lots and lots of tricks and clever things that have been integrated into, I suppose, all of the F-Series models, but particularly here in the Lightning. So let's get back and have a full look around. Like I said, there's a lot to this. There's a lot going on. Just to show you around a little bit, plenty of buttons, controls, switches. Here in the central console, we have this gigantic floating tablet screen, like in the Mackie with the physical volume dial over the top of the screen. Really nice touch, one press inside, shuts it all up, your climate settings down here, some of your basic functionality, like your windscreen heater, your heated seats, your heated steering wheel, ventilation, all that down at the bottom. A whole wealth of controls, settings, you name it. Obviously, all of the cameras, have a look here inside the Schmuseum. Um, you can choose which angle you'd like to see out of this, lots as you can imagine, and just settings beyond your imagination. Everything that you could possibly need, weighing what we have in the car at the moment, for example. Lighting, your power settings, parking assist. It's pretty clever how much this actually offers through this system. And then you also, in addition to that, have games, you have tiles, you have all sorts of things that you can play. The lane change game, for example, you're kind of driving up the screen, dodging other vehicles, and you get four GTs that we're overtaking right here. As I say that, obviously, I've got a Ford GT over my shoulder. Anyway, I don't want to get too into that, so we'll let this go completely wrong. Um, trip information, data, it's all in there. It's all super convenient. But around that, just in front here, we've got more sockets for plugging everything in. We've got your hitch controls down here, your pro trailer controls, the start button there. In the center here, you can just close this up. Nice wooden finish, wireless charging pad, USB and USB-C ports cup holders, some pens in this little storage at the moment. This is quite funky with the shifter. Obviously you um, pull it into drive, reverse, or into park. And obviously when you're in reverse, as you heard, you get that beep, which is to let everybody know what's happening because otherwise it's silent. If you press that, it tucks down. The reason that tucks down is so that you can then open up your table. And I did actually use this. I had my laptop out to reply to something on the table in the central console. So it's not as random as it looks. Or you can close that, go the other way and open it up. And you've got a massive storage bin with all of our documents, paper, copy of the uh, spec sheet and so forth, all tucked in there. More cup holders. I don't know how many cup holders there are in here, but it's a lot. It's like a crazy amount. We've got a nice glass panoramic roof. You can close that up. Looks really, really smart. Um, you can open up the rear window as well, back there. Slide of the button here, that opens and closes. Um, yeah, everything else more or less that you'd expect. Lots of controls on the steering wheel for your adaptive cruise, for your media, and then your usual mirrors, lights, windows, controls, and everything else all around. But let me turn this off, comfort entry. So that's quite fun, by the way, the graphics that it shows. I'm actually gonna start it up if you look at the dashboard quickly. Ford built tough and it gives you some info and shut that back off. So the assisted entry and exit lifts the steering wheel up, moves your seat back, makes all of that even easier than it would otherwise be. Cause I want to hop out and show you in the back and what's going on back here. So actually let me run round to that side, open the door super quickly to show you cause I need to just fold this loads of space back here plenty of leg room. You can pull on here and fold the seat up. I'm gonna run around to the other side to do exactly the same to show you the extra storage that you get back here. If you don't have any passengers to take with you, you can fold that back, massive area. You can also open this up, have a bit of an extra storage bin here as well. You'd lock that into place, I believe. What do you do? Yes, you do it that way. And then when you fold the seats down, they're actually a little bit more sturdy as well. And you've got that under seat storage if you want to be able to use it for extra things down there as well. So the storage possibilities are nearly endless. Even here, another 12 volt USB ports, another charging socket. It just goes on and heated seats in the back as well. 
endless. It's, it's literally nearly endless. Armrest, more cup holders. You never know how many you might need. Just goes on and on and on. So let me close this back up. Come back round towards your side because I think when it comes to something like this, like I said, on the basic level, it's the newest iteration of the F-150 pickup. The significant difference, and I want to come round to the other side actually to show this, is that instead of what we normally have, come round here, we have an EV charging port, where of course, when it's plugged in, this blinks and actually shows you the percentage charge as well as the display inside. You'd hit the button to release it, and that's for your fast charging. So you just use the top port for regular charging, use the whole thing for your rapid charging at the side of the road, and that closes back up. This being the platinum trim means that it's the fully loaded specification, very, very high level of trim. I didn't show it earlier, but there's a button here as well if you want to pop that open. And that's why it has everything. There are four different levels of trim for the car. You don't need to go full fat. You definitely don't need to have absolutely everything that this beastie has, but it's got so much, even things like, there's a light you can turn on and off in here, just with a button on the side. There's the emergency release if you've locked somebody into it as well. Storage nets, cubbies, latches to hold things down, depending what you've got in here, what you're doing. It just goes on and on and on. It's all thought about. So it's a rewriting of the rule book in the sense of it's a new mindset with a different powertrain, with an electric powertrain. But it is what we know done very closely to what we know, which to me is a big deal because so many of these kind of cars try and glitz them up in ways that just feel unnatural, the appearance, the style. But this does it in a very, very, very well thought out way. And kudos to Ford for managing that and for doing that, even if perhaps an EV powertrain isn't for everyone, especially if you need to use it for journeys more than 300 miles and don't have access to chargers or to fast chargers to be able to do that purpose. But for a lot of people, we don't drive 300 miles in a day normally. 300 miles is, I mean, that means you're gonna be spending five, six hours at the wheel. If you're not spending five or six hours at the wheel in the day and you can charge it up to full overnight, what more do you really need? It does that really well. And all of that, $100,000 or so, it's not too crazy either. Yeah, impressive, very impressive. So it is pretty much the iPhone or Android, you know, the smartphone generation of the pickup truck. It is a new generation. It is a very clever generation. Uh, I think those multiple hundreds of thousands of orders that Ford have for these are for good reason. I'd recommend it if you're considering it. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. What a cool opportunity to be one of the first, if not the first outside of Ford in Europe to get behind the wheel of the new F-150 Lightning. That's it. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers. Bonus clip. I just discovered something. Let me head and fold the seats in the back again. Fold these back up. Have a look at this. If I come back around towards the front. This seat, you can put it all the way back. It goes completely to a flat position. It takes a while, but electric seat. Wait for it. It goes totally, totally flat. That might have been obvious, but I didn't realize that it did it. And they're quite nice seats, the perforation. It actually lifts up this back part of the base. There we go, your life flat bed, if you need to chill out and rest in your lightning.